Hey folks, it's a beautiful day for music. It's a wonderful day for sound. I'm here with part two of the Left Hand Jam. Hopefully you've checked out part one. If you haven't, definitely go give it, um, go, go give it a, a, a look, a listen, a run through and things. Um, shout out to my patrons. Thank you for, for definitely helping me keep the page going. Um, let's, let's go ahead and get into it. So in part one, we talked about basic setup. We talked about my particular way that I like to think about my angles and all of those types of things. Um, today, we're just gonna go over a few different ideas and a few different things that'll kind of get our left hands once again moving. Let's immediately just start off with some basic um, eighth note crushes. And what I'm gonna do with these eighth note crushes, I don't need them to be super short, but I do wanna make sure that I'm, I'm sort of stopping the stick at the bottom and I'm getting this little short compressed multiple bounce, like a little buzz. Let's try it. One and two and ready and go. And one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and when I'm actually doing this I want to make sure that my shoulders are nice and relaxed even though the left hand is the focus right now I do want to make sure I kind of move my head up and away from getting into this like sort of crouched sort of thing you know we're always kind of looking at that left hand trying to make sure that it's doing the right things as far as looking and moving the right way but don't get too far sort of into that that you start to have bad posture so i'm going to purposely look away over to the other side i'm going to be look, kind of looking in the air i'm going to make sure that my breath is nice and smooth in and out when i'm doing this and then i'm going to go back to normal notes here once again making sure i'm not pushing up with those bottom fingers too much sending the stick down at a nice speed or a nice velocity beautiful wrist turn here bottom fingers are nice and relaxed but still kind of close to the stick we're gonna need those later on <laughs> going back into the buzzes ready and buzz very nice once again a nice short kind of staccato condensed buzz here and you will start to kind of Feel that little wake up in that thumb and that first finger, your index finger there. So be very aware of that once that actually starts to happen. Keep those shoulders nice and relaxed. Once again, you can always kind of wiggle those out. Trying to have a beautiful consistency of motion here. Back to normal notes. And one, three, and four, and one, and two. Such a beautiful day out here. These are my chickens in the background. <laughs> three, and four, and one and two and three we'll stop right here and stop cool you can go ahead and shake that out and a lot of times i just kind of like to flail it around a lot of little floppy floppies here going on i like to do some of these just kind of back and forth let my fingers just kind of absolutely relax nice flappy arms and things and stuff so two things i want to look at as far as my actual buzzes here and and, and these two ways will sort of help me to figure out my thumb to first finger sort of articulation um, and, and maybe a few different options. So first of all, when I'm actually, when I, when I have my connection here with my thumb and my index finger, when I'm doing those very short buzzes, I'm applying a lot of pressure down into the drum. So a lot of times that pressure almost comes from like my fingernail of my thumb down into that first finger, the index finger, and I'm pushing that combination down through that, through that particular area. Now, if I were to try to open up the buzzes a little bit more, for me at least, it pushes, or at least it, it kind of works out from an efficiency standpoint for me to push a little bit of that pressure a little bit further back onto my thumb. So instead of it feeling like me pushing from the front part, I almost start to feel it push from the first kind of knuckle or breaking point here in my thumb. I started to feel it almost kind of on the inside of here, pushing down and in on the actual stick. That's just another particular place for me to push that I can get um, or use what I call the thumb butt, <laughs> right? All of this little meat that's connected to the thumb, that's a very powerful muscle when we get into playing things that are uh, that's very quick, when we get into playing different kind of ornamentation as far as different type of multiple bounces. So know that you can get some of that pressure pushing from the front part of your thumb through that kind of fingernail, 
but also pushing towards the back part of your thumb and to that stick. Just as a little bit of uh, exploration right now, start to just kind of, uh, even if your thumb is flat, maybe start to kind of push it down and in a little bit while it's on the stick and see what type of buzz that gets you. And you can do that with a little bit of that wrist turn also. And then go back and push from the front part of that, of that thumb down. Now you're gonna notice with all of those options, you can choose to do that with your thumb kind of as the primary thing, whether it be the front or the back, or you can choose to do that in combination with that wrist turn, which will of course give you more height when you actually play those things. You figuring out exactly what it is to push from the front part of that thumb or the back part of that thumb is really gonna open up worlds of possibilities for you when it comes to playing sustainable kind of buzz rolls. For me, that comes from the back part of my thumb. Even though it's still connected in the front, I definitely feel it more so towards the back. Or when it comes to playing things like very short crushes, when you're, when you're having to like chop out and play very aggressively, um, it really helps to have that sort of front part to really kick in to, to get some, some nice short articulations out of there. Let's go back and forth now here um, while playing just basic 16th notes. So I'm gonna start off playing some open buzzes, right? I'm, gonna, I'm only gonna do this at like a mezzo piano with my 16th notes. And then I'm gonna go into playing um, some shorter kind of staccato buzzes here. So it'll sound like <laughs> like little bees. I call them short bees with my younger students. Here it is. So we'll just go back and forth with that. One, two, but T and the goat. And one E and the two E and the three and the four short buzz. Pushing from the back part of the thumb back into the longs and shorts. Up, 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 along. Two E and the three and the four E and the short. Longs. Two, three, four, short. Two, three, four, long. Long bees. <laughs> short. Two, three, four, long bees. Long bees. Yeah, 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 short. Very nice. Back to longs. Yeah. Four, short. Four, long. Three, four, short. Two, three, and the four, e and the long. Two, three, four, short. Two, three, long's a little bit louder. Two, three, four, short. Two, three, four, long. Two, three, four, short. Two, we'll stop right here. Bam, cool, cool, cool. Go ahead and shake that out. Especially if you haven't been a traditional player for long, you're gonna start to once again, feel those muscles wake up and it's totally a normal thing. It's a part of kind of building that muscle. You don't go through your life having to deal with these specific types of movements. So just like when you start off, maybe something like Steven's grip, you really have to work or to negotiate with muscles that you don't use in your everyday life, <laughs> just kind of walking around here as a human. So hopefully those two kinds of ideas uh, sort of helped you out. Looking forward to uh, working things out once again in part three. I'll see you guys.